Here it is. The Netgear R6100 Wi-Fi router with the AC1200 dual band capability. And uh, I just got the box and let's see what the heck comes inside. Uh, let's see here, it says it's got the App Store and the Google Play and Mac P PC. Uh, has all sorts of great things. Simultaneous dual band, easy installation. Well, we'll find out. HD streaming, multiple streaming. Oh, what the hell? That sounds great. Well, let me see what we can tell you about this thing. Let's see here, we got a bunch of uh, manuals. And uh, who cares about those? Ooh, we got a nice little power bug. Pretty standard. Uh, it kind of goes sideways so that it uh, only takes up one spot in your, uh, in your outlet. Comes with a network uh, cable, which is pretty standard. Oh, well, this one's a little bit higher. This is what they call the shielded type. See how it's got uh, metal around here? I've always liked these. I actually bought, uh, already had one like this, and I really like it. It's just a little bit sturdier. It has a ground on it. So uh, instead of being untwisted shielded pair, it's, it's, er, it's, it's actually shielded. This is a Cat 5e, so it'll even do gigabit speeds. And uh, they even say this ends for your router and this ends for your modem. Although I'm sure both ends are pretty much the same. Here's the router out of the bag and you can see it has a nice protective covering for the shiny black plastic. I'm sure it's a, a real uh, fingerprint magnet. On the back, you can see where it has a, a place for the DC. Seems to have a positive acting power switch, which is nice. Has a yellow port that says internet, which is of course the WAM port. And then it has four ports that go to the, the four port switch. And as I understand, these are only 100 megabit per second. They're not gigabit uh, ports. Then it has a USB port, which can be hooked up to storage or can be hooked up to USB printer. And those are, are pretty good uh, pretty good things. Uh, it, it has its own password. It has an unbelievably uh, complex uh, individual password for security so that there's not just some standard uh, password. And the SSID is uh, maybe uh, uh, slightly unique from units to, to units. It has all this default information on the bottom and also has a sticker here. Uh, and you could probably peel a st sticker off and, and stick it somewhere uh, and save it for, for somewhere important. Okay, I plugged everything on, powered it on there, turned on my computer. And uh, the network's connected, the network cable's connected, but I have no internet. So uh, apparently you have to get in here and probably go through some cr crazy uh, wizard here. Let me just open up my web browser and see what happens. Okay. Well, it looks like we got uh, the Network Genie. I mean, this is what happens whenever you open up the web browser. It just uh, comes in here and you can see the URL up here. It says www.routerlogin.net. So uh, let's just see here, important update. And it says my IP address has been updated to 10.0.0.1. How nice. Congratulations, I'm connected to the, the internet. Take me to the internet. Well, I, I'm really not too happy about that. I, the way I look at it, I should just be able to come through here and turn this thing on. But uh, look at this, it seems to have some interesting uh, features. It's got the network genie. We'll take a look at that maybe a little bit later. But I really hate any software you have to install. But uh, you probably don't really have to install it, but uh, I've used this for uh, another Netgear product, uh, and it just gives you a bunch of information. It's not that it's not harmful. It's not something you have to run. I'm sure. Ready Share USB, and the, and they're talking about printers and files, and DLNA. This is actually really nice. Uh, uh, I'll get into the DLNA, DLNA media sharing. Uh, 
in a little bit here and live parental controls. So uh, safer web surfing for all those connected to the devices. I guess that must appeal to some people. Okay, uh, I'm still at the network login.net. You remember it had the button that said take me to the internet and open up a new browser which took me to, to netgear.com to talk about their wonderful router. Well, I'm st I refreshed uh, router uh, login.net and now it's asking me for a username which is a D M I N according to the manual and then uh, the password is password P A S S W O R D let's give that a try oh okay this is what they talk about network genie they're actually talking about the firmware of the router I was thinking maybe it might be some uh, third-party program they had to run on your computer so okay this is a lot better I guess they just call everything Network Genie because I've, I've run a different program for powerline networking that's called Network Genie 2 so it says internet's good blah 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 the password and the whatever and uh, well it's uh, n not the uh, the best firmware I've ever seen so they seem to have basic okay, well this is interesting I, I plugged in the USB drive went to the ready share and it didn't show anything so I clicked on refresh and now it shows a, a mounted a USB sort storage so you can see it's slash slash ready sh share slash USB storage and it, and it says that there's no uh, passwords required and it seems to think that it's 30 gigabytes which is uh, the right number and uh, it gave it a U drive folder name. That's kind of uh, odd. I don't know what's going up with that. Uh, let me go take a look at this some more. Okay, uh, I'm going to click edit. And this is kind of interesting here. This, so this is setting up like the kind of uh, sharing that we can have for, uh, for our ready share drive. So, uh, so you can see they gave it the the network neighborhood is going to be slash slash ready share and I'll, I'll take a look at that through the Windows interface to see if I can find it which, which would be kind of nice if I can get it that way and then the HTTP interface is uh, ready share router login dot net slash shares and I don't have HTTP or FTP enabled for external ports but you can see that if I wanted to set up a uh, an FTP server and I could uh, access it from the the internet I could have this thing going here so that that's kind of interesting that's kind of interesting I imagine there uh, so that that could be a, a nice little way to share files uh, over the internet to your home uh, homeland that, that could be nice hey okay I brought up my uh, uh, my Windows uh, neighborhood network and uh, here we got the ready share this is the computer I'm on it's called spare PC and uh, here's the ready share let me just double click on it and then it has a shared fol folder USB storage okay and here's all the files that I uh, uh, have here and uh, this is great because you can write files here and, and copy files off just like a uh, a Windows network this is really really nice this is uh, something I haven't seen on some other uh, routers uh, I think I like this fe uh, uh, feature. Now another thing is they detect a media device. They detect the uh, the DLNA, the Ready DLNA uh, R6100. Let's double click on that. So that brings up Windows Media Player, and let's take a look in the library. Okay, let's take a look at uh, videos, all videos. Come on, come on, all videos. There we go. Well, here we are. Okay, well, this is a little sucky here. You can kind of see how it says version 1.0.0.28, which is the version that came with the router. But it says that there's a GUI language version is 0.158, and there's a new GUI language version, which is 0.161, and I click yes, and it goes through a big thing that downloads and what have you, but it never gets updated. So. Uh, Apparently uh, that doesn't work or it's broken, so I went to their website to see what the newest version was, and apparently the new version, oops, well, I don't want an online survey, look at the hell. So anyway, firmware version 1.0.0.28 is the newest version, 
So apparently I have that, and I don't know what the, the GUI language version is, but uh, I guess we're okay here. So let's just kind of go on, and we can go to Advanced Setup and see all their advanced settings. So uh, basically they have wireless settings. So uh, I guess uh, normal wireless stuff. You can set this up as a wireless AP. And uh, that, that just means turning off the DHCP server. So that means if you already have a network and you just need like another uh, access to it, you do that and you sign it a, an address on your, your LAN and turn off the DHCP server, and then you can do that. Uh, oh, wireless repeating function. That's a nice advanced thing to where you can actually have it uh, pick up uh, uh, your existing wireless connection through the wireless and then repeat more wireless to, to have a greater coverage. That's a, a neat little thing. Port forwarding. Oops, go back over here, I guess I didn't have it on camera. Port forwarding, port triggering. You can uh, add those things. Uh, uh, let's just say you had your own FTP server. You could uh, give an address on your net network and then uh, anything that came to your external uh, IP address uh, at port 21 or wherever you picked, it would go to the FTP server. Dynamic DNS, not something I need, but uh, there are s service providers that will give you uh, a dynamic DNS. Uh, you can set up static routing, remote management, which means you, you log into it from, a, uh, from the internet. USB settings. And it says enable USB port, and, and it's yes or no. UPnP, that's turned on, and uh, seems to, uh, to be working. Uh, now this is interesting, it seems to have IPv6, and uh, which is maybe a new thing, it's nice to see some IPv6 support. And the only other advanced thing it has is a traffic meter, to where it kind of shows you all of your internet traffic. So. It's uh, it's pretty tame, you know. It's uh, pretty pretty tame uh, stuff we got here. But th then again, this is like a, a consumer grade router. It's not an enthusiast grade router. Uh, you're gonna have to spend an extra fifty dollars the next grade up for the enth enthusiast grade router, and they'll maybe have more things like a QoS and scheduling and a time server and uh, you know all the other great things that you might want to have access restrictions. Of course, they do. They did advertise parental controls, but uh, yeah. So, advanced home. Well, yeah. Okay. Well, I don't know. Uh, here, here's what it is. This is this. It is what it is. Okay. Getting back to to this. Here's like the the main uh, login screen. It says everything's good. And I, I clicked on parental controls just to see what the heck that is. And apparently, when you click on that, it brings up a web uh, another window, a web browser to the, the Netgear site and allows you to download live parental control, some sort of a, a program that would run on your computer. So apparently it supports Windows and it supports Macs. So that's what this whole parental control is. You don't have any access control like uh, other routers I've had. You would uh, save for various different people, either a globally allow, allow or globally deny the internet thing. Like uh, I have a thing like at midnight it turns off the internet uh, on, on weekdays for, for my son. Well, it actually turns off everybody except for the people I allow to not have it turned off, but I could have it going the other way. And uh, this doesn't have that. And uh, every, the only other thing we haven't really talked about is the guest network. And apparently uh, you can enable a guest network. And uh, if, you, if you don't want to give out your, uh, your uh, password, your main uh, thing, you just want to want to give somebody a, a guest thing without uh, having to reset your uh, network uh, pa or your uh, Wi-Fi password uh, after they leave. So that's about it. It's just uh, pretty simple basic functions. It really, the, the network attached storage I'm very impressed with. I wish I had a USB printer. It would be very interesting to hook up a USB printer and see if you could share a printer that way, but uh, those things are kind of lame. But uh, having network attached storage as a as a part of the Windows network is really nice, really nice. And uh, it's DLNA uh, established. That means any TV or whatever, all these files that are on the, on this drive, I can go up to my TV and I can watch them. I can pause. I can fast forward. I can rewind. And uh, I tell you, that's a very sweet feature. 
Now I've got this old crappy piece of junk uh, uh, laptop here. This has got uh, Windows 2000 on it. And it's got a, a card here. It's got the a Linksys uh, G card plugged into the PCI MCA slot. And, uh, you know, uh, it, I, I was able, uh, when I tried to connect, I would click on connect and, it, and the network would show it connecting at top speed, but then it would come back and say, gee, we couldn't get a, an IP address. And uh, 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 so anyway, it just wouldn't connect the internet. And so I went back here on some of the options, and I don't know if you can see this option, but uh, I, I, on, the, on the mode, you see, originally it came up to 300 uh, megabits per second. So that's the thing where it does the, the channel bonding to where it uses 40 megahertz. So I, I put it down up to 154 megahertz, and then I, uh, it still didn't work, and I put it down to where it says up to 54 mega, megabits. And after I did that and reset it, then the laptop works. And now the laptop is working, and it's got an IP address of 10.0.0.3. So I, I just thought that was awfully odd. I thought that this stuff was all automatic, and it would automatically come back down to G mode. But it didn't, and I don't know why. It, it seems really weird that, that it wouldn't do that. I'm going to see if there's uh, some sort of advanced compatibility to go back to G mode that I'm missing. But otherwise, I would have to call this kind of a... A bug with the router. Uh, I mean, it's supposed to just work. It's it's supposed to support 802.11G, uh, uh, and, and it doesn't uh, right out of the box unless you do some changes to it. Okay, now I've got my old router and the new Netgear router next next to each other in my basement on the far end of the house, and I'm in the upstairs on the other end of the house. And I'm just kind of looking at signal levels. And I'm really kind of amazed here. Uh, you know, every time I, I, I refresh, I'll, I'll get a different number. But the, the Netgear is uh, consistently having quite a stronger signal than my old router. So, uh, well, now, now they're exactly the same. But, uh... Okay, well, here we go. Now we got, uh... 50, now they're pretty similar. It's kind of interesting. I wonder why I was doing that. Sometimes they're pretty close. Sometimes one's a lot more. 